To what extent is the truth compatible with peace when it comes to society? Are certain lies necessary to keep the peace? Do you think we could really handle the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? We intuitively feel that truth is a good thing. And indeed, Kabbalists tell us that truth, they call this force in us, truth, is one of the four forces that is circulating in us like seasons and constantly churning us and turning us in different directions. And we can gain insights both into the historical processes that are unfolding in our lives and the way that our lives are unfolding by looking at how this property works in history and in our current society. Look at how truth works in the workplace. For example, when you get hired, it's based on your boss's belief that you will put forth your best effort, that you'll give it your 100%. Now imagine if your boss had a special x-ray machine whereby they could tell in each moment how much effort you're putting forth and would pay you according to your efforts. Studies show that employees put forth about 60% of what they're capable, meaning just enough not to get fired. Meaning we want to exploit our employer for the maximum possible pay while giving back the minimum possible effort. And obviously, we don't want to exert more than we feel we're getting paid for, or exert more and get paid less than somebody else who's getting paid more for the same work, for example. Now, what if we could take such an x-ray machine and see what each and every person is giving to society? What we would immediately see is that for any given job, if you have two workers doing the exact same job, meaning lifting the exact same intellectual or physical load, what you would find is that for one worker, the job is like lifting 100 pounds, while for another worker, the same job is like lifting 1,000 pounds. And that's not fair. Why? because each of us is built differently on the inside, meaning psychologically, by nature, we have different qualities. And basically, we can divide society into two types, and we can also divide ourselves at different times in our lives into these two types. The one type we could call the lazy and backward. The other type we could call the nimble, smart, and diligent. The nimble, diligent, and smart types are never more than 30% of the population, while the other 70% are those lazy and backward types. And we can also check ourselves and see what proportions of the day we're in these different qualities, meaning sometimes we're in the nimble, smart category, and sometimes we're in the lazy, do-nothing category. That's because in different states, and sometimes a state can last an entire lifetime, we are imbued with these different qualities by nature. And we can all feel a time, at least during our lives, when we felt so lazy we literally could not move. And we also recall times when we were just on fire to passionately complete some project. And at our birth, we each got our own proverbial basket of qualities. And in these circumstances, you already have the conditions for lack of peace, both externally in society because you have 70% of the population that more and more gets exploited by the nimble and cunning types. And this conflict is actually being reflected in forces inside of the person as well also creating a lack of internal peace. And I'm not even talking about the fact that when there is lack of peace in the world, it kind of nags at us. It's this subconscious sensation of a lack of security for the future. Because this backward, lazy type eventually starts to feel that he is working much harder than the nimble and smart. And though the Rothschilds and Rockefellers and Mark Zuckerbergs of the world also feel that they are working very, very hard, the backward type is never going to accept that they're working just as hard, nor that they deserve for their work to be paid 
a hundred, a thousand, or a million times more than what that simple worker is getting paid in his factory. So these two types throughout history are always at total odds with one another and can't see each other's viewpoint. Let's say Mark Zuckerberg, by the time he graduated high school, could read and write Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, as well as programming languages. And he felt that he worked very hard to get where he is. But are the internal efforts that he or someone like him made, are they equivalent to the efforts that a person working at some Amazon factory are making? Because even when two workers work the same job, they're built so differently internally that there's no way we can tell who's exerting more and thus who should receive more. We don't have this x-ray machine that can measure efforts. Therefore, it's impossible to create a peaceful society in which there is justice and also the truth prevails. Eventually, those 70% who are feeling themselves exploited by the rich, by the elite, they eventually rise up as they have done in all sorts of cases throughout history, and they destroy the government, destroy the peace, and destroy the society. But if these are indeed laws of reality that steer history in the directions that it goes, then why do we see so much injustice in the world? Why don't the lazy, poor masses realize their power and overtake the government and create a society like they would like to live in? Well, in some cases they do, and they have in the past and will in the future, but there are two more forces that come to balance out the force of truth to make it more acceptable. We'll discuss those forces in an upcoming video, but I can already tell you how this story ends, that none of the forms of government that keep being created and destroyed actually end in peace meaning none of our ideas as humanity, as beautiful as the Enlightenment was and many other such ideas, none of them actually yield lasting peace. They only yield a cycle of destruction and regeneration, which can't be the condition for lasting peace. That's why if we're waiting for peace or a good life to happen by different changes, whether political or social or otherwise out there in the world, all that has to change. It's never going to come. I have to start the change. And through my attitude, because we are in an integral, interconnected system that is really above time and space, this internal change that happens in me happens to some extent throughout humanity. According to what vector should I start to change myself? In order to start this change with me, I need to internally, in my attitude, start moving towards what is the real truth. Start moving above all of these calculations of competition and comparison between people and behave internally as though I have such a special x-ray machine where I can see the internal efforts and contribution that each and every person is making to society. And not in any practical actions that I'm doing in my business, but just in my internal attitude, which is actually the most powerful force in the universe, in this internal attitude towards others. I need to start feeling as though everyone is actually contributing something equal, an equal effort according to what they got in their basket from nature, and that everybody is contributing something special, and that in fact, it's on purpose that we were not all made Mark Zuckerberg, because each of us has something special, and in the correct vision of reality, something equal that we can contribute to the system to which we all belong.